Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to discuss the upgrade feature from Electrum Sabercrafts. Now I've reviewed Electrum Sabercrafts a few times before. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. I was in on their flagship run of the uh, Errants back when they made their first 50. Um, and they've, uh, they've since been creating some really unique designs and they all feature this, uh, this touch pad right here, which is a very, very distinct thing that Electrum Sabercrafts offers. Um, but not too long ago, they upgraded their board rather substantially. So their soundboard went from a D2 or Diadium 2. I don't know if even the flagship ones had a Diadium 1 in them, but a Diadium 2 board to a Diadium 3, which added a bunch of new features that I'll be looking at and review fairly soon here. Uh, I did want to talk, though, about the upgrade service, because all those people who had the older uh, Electrum Sabercraft savers, if they want the new features like NeoPixel blade adapters, um, smooth swing, uh, font conversion, all the wonderful things that I'll talk about in a future video, they have to get their saber that they may love updated to a V2. So I wanted to talk about the ways to do that. So Electrum offers an upgrade service that's about, I think it's about $200 or something like that, where you send them your Sabre. You have to foot the shipping to get them the Sabre. You have to foot the shipping to get back the Sabre. And it costs like $200. Um, they don't send you back your old parts, so you end up with the new board and everything like that, and you have to wait through their queue of, uh, of installation while they set the board up and get it back to you, and that can take quite a while. Um, there are better ways to do it. Uh, if you get a D3 board, you can install it yourself fairly easily, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Getting a D3 board is a little bit difficult, though, because the D3 boards don't really, uh, don't really get sold separately too very often. So you can vault around, the, uh, vault around the Facebook groups and see if anybody has uh, done a conversion and they've bought one and taken it out and are selling the innards. Um, that's, that happens upon occasion. I've seen a few of them go up. Uh, the other option is since their conversion service is like 200 and something dollars and their lowest end saber, the neophyte is also like 200 and something dollars. You can just order a neophyte saber, um, get the neophyte saber with the new board that you want, get the neophyte saber in, pull the new board out, put it in your preferred saber, and then pop the, uh, the old board into the neophyte, and you'll have two functioning sabers as opposed to just one and that extra board. So that's what I would actually suggest. Um, but let me talk about the ease of removing it, because a lot of times when you start talking about install and swapping internal components, people start to get a little bit, uh, a little bit cautious. Electrum Sabercraft, it's less of a deal than usual. So I'm going to show you here with my, uh, my Errant. Now, again, this is an older model, um, but it's still compatible with the newer in the electronics with a little bit of a modification. I'll show you that in a second. But even on the newer Electrum Sabercrafts, the process is pretty much the same. What you have in Electrum is you have one set screw right here that's holding in your LED or your NeoPixel adapter. Uh, you have a pommel. Some of the pommels unscrew, some of them had a set screw that you undid to slide the pommel off. But once you have the pommel off, uh, you can get access to the board. You just have to remove this set screw as well. All right, so let me show you on the, uh, the D3 that I put in here how easy this is to take out. Once you get into the, uh, or once you remove the pommel, there's little pressure clips right here. Okay, you push the pressure clips, so you push these little clips right here, pressure clips retract, you pull off what is essentially the speaker. And the D3 board definitely upgraded this speaker so it doesn't sound nearly as tinny anymore. Now one note, there's a little line in here. You can kind of see the light shining through it. There's a little, uh, I believe this is the, uh, the Bluetooth adapter right here. That pokes through that line. So if you don't have that lined up, this thing doesn't clip all the way on. But once you get this thing unclipped, if you have this set screw undone right here, the board is, or the, uh, the chassis is pretty much loose. The only thing in your way is the switch. So what you do with the switch, these things are just press fit for the most part. So if you get a uh, screwdriver or a fingernail or something like that, you can pull up the board. And uh, what I generally suggest is you gotta get this board through this hole. So put it in at an angle, twist the board a little bit so that you're at a, or see what I did there? I, I, put, I poked it in at an angle and then I'm twisting the board. And then if I pull it a little bit, I can basically just poke the board down in like that. And after I do that, the whole thing 
slides right out. All right, so this is the D3 board right here. And the D bo or D1 board right here. Very similar creatures. Board, plug and play switch. The uh, LED connector is up here a little bit further. Um, Bluetooth chip. Uh, we've got the on off. We've got the, uh, look at the speaker and all that wonderful stuff right here. So this is how we access the board. Now to get the new board in, all we do, same thing that we did in reverse. You take the, uh, and you notice this is a NeoPixel version right here. So you take the board, you put it in, put it in at a slight angle. Keep sliding it in until you see the chip, or the, uh, the, the switch right here. Pull it in till you, or push it in till you can move the switch up. Pull the switch out through the aperture, through the opening so that it's sitting on top, straighten the board, push it into place, press fit that, tighten that set screw, line up that little uh, Bluetooth chip, clip it back on, and you're good to go. You have an upgrade. And you probably have two functioning sabers at this point. Now, I mentioned that there was a little bit of modification. Some of the sabers are slightly longer than other sabers. So what you need to do in the case of a modification, or what I needed to do in this one's, in the instance of this saber, take that back out again. What I needed to do was actually I took the insides out and I cut this chassis down by a, like a quarter of an inch right here, because this was a quarter of an inch higher. So I cut this chassis down by just a little bit up here, and there was room between here and the battery. You see, I could have cut it another quarter inch, and that allowed it to fit into the errant, which is shorter than whatever this board came out of. All right, but once again, easy enough. Put it in sideways, push it up into place, pull out the switch plate, straighten the board, Press fit the switch plate. Tighten the set screw. Connect the speaker. Reattach the pommel. Oh, let me fire this up here. Install a NeoPixel blade. Wait for the board to boot. Keep waiting for the board to boot. There we go. And voila, upgraded Electrum Sabercraft, or Electrum Sabercraft. All right, so like I said, look for a review very shortly of the uh, new features of the D3 board, and I will see you back when I do that. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully this has helped you guys. And again, I highly recommend, if you got just a little bit of technical capability, um, Sending in your old Electrum Saber for the upgrade service is probably not the best way to do it. Just get the new lowest end Saber or find an extra board floating around on the market. Do it yourself and you're going to save yourself time and you're going to save yourself 
funds and you're going to get more out of the exchange. So here we go and I'll see you next time.